If you're looking for the best sports memorabilia and card break room on the internet, you've come to the right place. Welcome to Ultimate Autographs Live Break Room. Tonight's action will move fast, so we want to prep you for what you're about to see on your screen. First, the all-important dice roll number. At the top of the show, the host will randomize a series of numbers. The number selected from the randomizer will become the dice roll number for the entire show. Meaning every mystery box that is broken, the names of every collector will be placed on a list and randomized using the dice roll number for the show. Next, you see this black ticker down here? This shows you which numbers are still available in each and every Ultimate Autographs Mystery Box series. When a break fills or sells out, the host will ask for a number. This is where you make your selection from. Simply type a number in the chat and the host will pick the first number they see. Throughout the show, you may see two different types of breaks, divisional and top spot. Divisional breaks are most common. In this format, all eight individuals who enter a football-themed break will be positioned next to one of eight football divisions after their names are randomized using the show's dice roll number. When the mystery box is opened, the football division of the team represented in that mystery box becomes the winning division. The lucky collector whose name is randomly placed next to that football division takes home the signed piece of authenticated memorabilia. Our top spot format is typically reserved for giveaways, college theme series, and non-football breaks. In a top spot break, all names are added to a list. They are randomized using the show's dice roll number. At the end of the randomization, the name at the top becomes the winner of the signed item or prize. Breaking sports memorabilia has never been easier or more fun than it is in Ultimate Autograph's live break room. Remember, Every mystery box series you see on the show can also be purchased as a personal mystery box that is either shipped directly to your home for you to open, or you can request to have it opened on a future Ultimate Autographs Live Breaks broadcast. Also, while you're waiting for your break to fill, we encourage you to look around ultimateautographs.com to see if you find a piece of memorabilia you love and want to add to your collection. And don't forget, every live break spot you purchase automatically earns you 6% back in UA cash that you can later exchange for a mystery box or a signed item of your choosing. All right, the time has come. Let's break some certified authentic sports memorabilia in Ultimate Autographs Live Break Room. Tell them, boys. And from our studios in suburban Chicago, Welcome everybody to Ultimate Autographs Live Breaks. Happy Saturday afternoon to you. I'm Joe. That's Matt. What's going on? Thanks for being here. Matt, how you doing tonight, man? You've had a long night. Last night, you are already at the golf course doing some work this uh, morning. Yep. And now you're here. Yep, it's been a long day, but here I am. Put a smile on my face and ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> he's grinding it out. He He's... Uh, He's here, we're here, hope you're going to join us this afternoon for some uh, box breaking here of cool sports memorabilia. Gabriel, what's up brother? What's going on? Uh, we are, uh, we've got lots of fun stuff here in the room today. Let me tell you what we have in the room and then we will open a box. We have the, our NFL jersey series, complete jersey series, the complete helmet series. As always, uh, the first live break is sold out, so we'll do that first. This afternoon, after we do the virtual dice roll, the mini uh, football series, helmet series, is uh, in the room as well. We have two breaks posted on the website right now. Live break number one is a double box break. They uh, posted that last night, didn't fill it, so that's still up to, I think, four spots left. Yep. Matt, right. four left in that. And then um, the uh, I put a, a we put a uh, live break number two up there. That's a single box break at twenty five dollars per spot for those mini helmets. Also have the A Train footballs. I think we have uh, live break number one just about halfway sold out. Three or four spots left there. We have those script football helmets. I dig them. The uh, combination of platinum helmets and all, and uh, replicas, each with at least at least one inscription. And then we have our platinum series. The uh, spring ball still have, um, I think we have six left in that entire series. And we'll probably have a new platinum series next week. We've got a new lotto 
series, kind of a special thing we uh, yes. starting next week. That's correct. So yeah. that should be cool. We have the hamster wheel in the room. We've got all the yeah. ping pong balls in it, and you can win some fun stuff. There as well, kind of piggybacking off the uh, the Easter stuff we did, and then the St. Pat stuff. So uh, looking forward to the final couple of weeks here in April. It's already April 10th. Uh, Easter's out of the way. We got the NFL draft coming up in two weeks. I can't wait. Are you an NFL draft guy? Do you get into that? Yeah, I, I watch it. Big fan. Uh, it's always fun to see who goes where and what trades happen and all that kind of stuff. So it's, yeah, I really get into it. I don't. Uh, for, for years, I covered a lot of high school football in the Chicago suburbs, so I never was able to watch a lot of college football as much as I'd like. Yeah. But once uh, the draft comes around, I do a lot of boning up on guys, and yeah. uh, I'm not like watching film like the experts do, but I really get into it, uh, especially when the Bears are picking high, which for many years they have been in the last uh, <laughs> ten years or so. Uh, this year they're picking. 20th, and I don't trust anything this current regime does. But uh, we'll see. It's still fun to see where yeah. the dominoes fall, with, with especially the QBs, uh, etc. So uh, in any event, uh, let's get it going. Let's start uh, with the uh, virtual dice roll here, uh, and then we, so we can uh, know what we're randomizing each break. Sounds good. Uh, how, many, how many times we're doing that. So there's the randomizer. You know the UA rules here, a 6 or higher, or a, a Dr. J, Julius Irving, number six, or higher. I always root for the six, Matt. Yeah. I think we had six last night, actually. You did. So. I'm like, dang, they had a good night. They had a six. We got an eight. All right, it's not bad. I'll take it. Uh, eight on the randomizer. That'll be our number today. So let's put that up on the screen so everyone can see it, and uh, so I don't forget it. Eight on the, on the dice roll. And then uh, we'll get going here. Hopefully we can fill up some more spots. Right now, just one spot. Uh, Phil, that's the uh, complete helmet, and the right side of the screen there you see a complete helmet number one. So we can we can do it. Any baseball today, fellas? Uh, Troy, good question. No, uh, no baseball stuff. Darn. But we we have baseball stuff in the back room. We're going to be getting some stuff, whether it's baseball spe specifically baseball or in some mixers, because we got some fun. Uh, Fun stuff. There are mainly some jerseys I've seen signed by some guys that I've not seen yet. The, the memorabilia here in the room in our studios here. So um, that should be that should be good. I just don't know when uh, we're going to do that. Yeah, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. As always, always fun stuff going on here um, at UA. Amen to that. Right. So let's let's do the helmet number one, guys. If you are in this break, you'd like to call on a box number. I'd appreciate it. Otherwise, we'll randomize. The box, the boxes, the, the the boxes I have in the room for the complete helmet. Uh, you'll see them on the crawl there, kind of in the middle of the screen. Is our 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. Simple enough. I know we got more in the back, but uh, yeah, you're welcome, Troy. Thanks for asking. If you're in this break, uh, Chris, uh, Jorge Garcia. You do go like Jorge, not George, right? George, if you're in the, in the break room, let me know. Uh, Joey, Anthony, Logan, Ricky Guerrero. Uh, Kenneth and Steve and Stuber. Stubes calls out 27. That'll work, brother. Thank you. So let's randomize the um, the divisions, and then uh, we'll do box 27 on the uh, on the helmet. Let's get rid of the dice roll, Joe. All right, eight times on the randomizer, and then we'll open box 27. Kind of a rainy day here in Chicago. At least it's warm, though, Matt. Matt, you were at, uh, is it Seven Bridges? Yeah. It's a really nice, really high class, high class, really up uh, upscale golf course, public golf course. Correct, yeah. And what, what suburb is that in again? It is in the suburb of Woodridge. Woodridge. That's, I should. I think I knew that. Kind of by Neighborville. Um but yeah, it was uh, not warm this morning. Um, it was supposed to, it's supposed to be rain here all day, but it's that rain is not necessarily, at least in our neck of the woods over here, is not hit as much not, as I thought it would. Not but, too bad. Not, not enough to, to keep guys home. Correct. Yeah, right? <laughs> that's correct. It's supposed to get pretty bad, though, but we'll see what happens with that. I'll be grab box 27 and the uh, complete helmet. We have, what did I say, six six series up there, six different uh, series on the website. Jersey's helmet, spring ball authentics, the script helmets, A-train football, and uh, the little ones, the minis. Box 27, Steve, thanks for calling out the box, brother. Nice 
Here we go. Well, this is nice. This is a back at COA. How about the former Raider wide receiver, the great Tim Brown? Wow. This is dope. You digging this? AFC West. Tim Brown. AFC West, that's Logan. Is it Gwinnott? Gwinno? Logan, I apologize if I mispronounce your name. Logan, Tim Brown, that's sweet. That is. Former uh, Notre Damer. Tim Brown. Tim Brown. It's awesome. AFC West, Logan. It's a nice auto, too. I like the uh, It TV is. And the B and right, you can yeah. read it. Yeah. I'm always a big fan of when, <laughs> when you can read this the auto. Yeah. No you can make out the letters. No chicken scratch or... Right, no, no, no big scribble. They're not doctors, right? I mean, they can sign right. them like, like, like everyone else does. Matt, this is a big thing with me because I'm kind of an old, you know, see the gray. <laughs> I'm a little older, uh, but I like the older guys because they... You can really, really read their signature for the most part. Sometimes the younger guys, it's like, come on, bro, you can you can make a little more effort there. Joe, you're not a day past thirty. Thank you. <laughs> Give this kid a raise, <laughs> Matt. You're good, bro. That, that's that's nicer than I've heard in the chat uh, oh, by yeah. some guys. I get the, uh, you know, what was it like uh, in the during the dinosaur era stuff? I get that stuff. And I say, hey, if, if the if the old jokes are going to persist, I'm not going to bring in my Babe Ruth signed mini helmet to show everybody. So, uh, yeah. be nice, show a little respect. Hey, the older they get, the better. Right, David? Thanks, brother. I agree. All right, guys, thanks for participating at, at Complete Helmet number one here to uh, start off the afternoon on this Saturday First Saturday, I think I've hosted Garrett and I normally hear together both both shows, but Garrett's been hosting, I've been producing, so and it's me and Matt again uh, tonight at 8 p.m. Central Time, and then Garrett and Donnie in the uh, the break room uh, tomorrow, uh, actually, both shows. I'm not sure Garrett's here tomorrow. I think he's got the weekend off, actually. Oh, I thought... Uh, I'm not sure who's doing... Is that right? Not Garrett tomorrow? It's not Garrett tomorrow, I know... Uh, despite what the schedule says? Despite what the schedule says, I think he's got the weekend off. I'm not sure who's doing the back room, but I think Donnie is. Okay. The... Donnie will be doing uh, the hosting yep. regardless. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. You, again, our card guys, Donnie did, uh, what, four boxes of the Panini yeah. one football cards last Are you a yep. card guy? Um, not as much as I want to be. Uh, I collected as a kid. Yeah. But uh, it's been a while since I've gotten back into that, so... Uh, it was cool to see him. I mean, the cases were nice. With the whole, it was the whole package. As uh, he pulled some really nice Derrick Henry, that was like one of three. Okay. Um, Donnie said it was probably talking like a four-figure dollar. Is that right? If he would decide Donnie, know, Donnie knows the card. Yeah, Donnie is the, well. the card expert here at yeah. UX. Hopefully, we get more cards uh, in the future. Yep. Yeah, uh, very very cool. excited about that. So. David has a, uh, a Dick Williams signed baseball, and you can read it, and it's clean. I bet that's cool. Dick Williams, former former manager. Yeah, the card hobby, you're right. It's it's not the cards when I collected in the 70s and even a little, little bit in the 80s. Uh, it, it's it's different now, but it's, it's fascinating to see the cards. Uh, I miss the old cards, like just the, the photos of the guys. Yeah. I know that doesn't have carry any value, but you like the old offensive lineman photos when they'd be like this, you know. You know, like I kind of had that. You know, only, like only linemen do, uh, right, right. all linemen, whatever. But uh, uh, in any event, so you said you're a big collector. So what? what was... I I collect a lot of baseball cards. I have football cards. I have hockey cards from '70s and the '80s. So uh, what I would still you say? have. Like you can't throw them out, even no. if they're worth nothing. Some of them are worth a lot. Some are, uh, you know, they're basically, you know, you use them in the fire to like kind of like, keep the fire going. Sometimes, <laughs> actually, I don't. I can't even get myself. To do that because it would be sacrilegious to burn a baseball card, as it would be to throw out baseball cards. Yeah. You know, you always hear the horror stories like moms throwing out the baseball cards, oh, yeah. and there was like you know some rookie cards from the '60s, like ooh, right? Uh, it makes the card burn a little bit, yeah. Yeah, but I got a Wayne Gretzky rookie. Ooh, it's, it's got a little bubble like on the uh, on the top of it, like it was just came that way when I bought it. Okay. You know, on a pack of cards, 
Uh, so it's probably it's certainly not a nine or a ten, but it's still cool. Okay. I got a Walter Payton rookie. Um, so which, what's what's some, what's like your most favorite, your most prized, the one that you love the most? Probably just because I loved Walter Payton growing up. Okay. Um, so Walter. probably the Walter rookie card. Okay. Which was like 77, 1977 ish. Really? Okay. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. Classic. Yeah, it's, it's it's pretty cool. It just means a lot. I could, it probably means more to me than what it's worth because I mean I think it's you know it can be worth you know you got to get them all graded guys who collect cards know that but uh, yeah how about you do you have a favorite card I, like I said it's been a while since I have gone through that again yeah so I uh, I can't say that I do I know my dad kind of like yourself has okay. a lot of um, vast majority of baseball hockey um, okay all that kind of stuff too so. Very cool. I understand. I, I've seen the binders and everything else. So <laughs> I know what you're saying. It's fun. And yeah, I just can't get, like, I, you know, I have one year, I, one, I don't know what year it was, 75, 76, Paul Russell, former okay. Cub, not, you know, Rick's brother. He was with the Indians. I think I have nine Paul Russells. Uh, I still have, like, what am I doing with them? I'd be lucky if I could get nine cents for uh, each of them, but I can't throw them out. I just think that's like it's wrong. A Tom Brady rookie signed card sold for one point five million. Did I? I think I just read that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Is that nuts? That might be a record. Wow. Crazy. See, but I feel like cards is some one of those things uh, you could pass on to generation to generation. Totally. I mean, I don't know if. And I think it's kind of made a comeback. I see guys on Twitter, guys who I know uh, still yeah. collect cards, and yeah. even the it's made a comeback. Older cars from the seventies, eighties when I collected, guys like my age would just like just like they dig them. Right, it's it's so, kind of a com- making a comeback for sure. I think so. Yeah, but the cards today, like some like the cards that op- Donnie opens here, including the baseball ones that he's opened in the past mm-hmm. during the during the breaks, uh, they're just cr- crazy money. Oh yeah, and they cost crazy money. Right. So yeah. it's changed. Yeah. It's only two fifteen here on the breaker in the break room in the, our break studios, and we've only only opened we've opened only. One box. That was the complete helmet. Uh, that's because we have nothing else sold out. But we are close on some, including the uh, helmet number two. Three spots left in that. Last time I checked here, sounds right, Matt. And yeah. three left. I think three left in the A train. Those are those. Uh, the, oh, three left in the the mini double. Let's see if we can break that. That mini double box break. It's live break number one. Cheapest pack of cards is seventy bucks. Is that for uh, some of those Panini cards? Yeah, I, it's just it's 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 nutty. Seventy bucks. I saw a pack of hockey cards uh, for like twenty five, and it was I forgot who. I don't know if it was Tops or. Okay. I mean, back when I collected, I studied the card. Like, and I'd have the stack of cards. And I'd be like, and I would just study the stats and stuff, just because you know, sports fan. Today, I don't know if guys do that thing. The kids do that today. They're more looking for the. Uh, like you know, the autographs and the patch, right. and the patches and stuff like that. But well, back then, I just loved to study them. And well, and, and back then, not to date you here, Joe, but you couldn't go on the internet and look up their stats, right? So you'd have right, to, right. I had to buy the cards to, so I could, you know, someday stats. be prepared to do a job like this, so I could <laughs> share my knowledge. Or when I was a sports writer, um, so I I studied the cards instead of like math and history homework and stuff like that. Right. Which you know that's a good thing. Which is probably a bad thing, but. <laughs> Dennis Dayton, whoop, whoop, what's up? Dennis, did you hear Matt's whoop, whoop last week on his camera debut? Because that was just, like, almost operatic. I mean, that was just stellar. Go ahead, Matt, show off again. Oh, really? You ready? I'm putting you on this. I know you didn't get a lot of sleep last night. I know you've been on the run. Uh, how about a good whoop, whoop for Dennis? Get him going. All right, here we go. Whoop, whoop. There you go. See? See that I tell you? That I tell you? Guys, let's fill out some breaks here. What do you say? Uh, we just got going here. We're back here again tonight at 8 o'clock. But we, we hopefully can open some more boxes. Uh, box Panini Select Base Basketball is 600 easy. I know, man. It's nutty. So has Panini always been like a big... I mean, when I grew up, it was the tops, tops only. Okay. You know, like hockey, there'd be Opeachy and stuff, but it was tops. And then everyone started to get into it. Bowman, and okay. there was some other ones. So would you get like a piece of gum with it? Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Some of the cards, you know, would have the the wax remnant on the back. You know, kind of like almost stained from the the wax they used on really? on the pack. Yeah. You get cool. that film, you can't get it off. Um, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, but it was always on the back of the card typically. 
Okay. You know, so um, at least you didn't ruin the photo. Yeah. So, but, did, so did you actually ever eat the gum? Did you? Oh yeah, eat yeah. You had to eat the gum. I mean, that was okay. it was free. I mean, what are you gonna not not eat the gum? I mean, you might break a tooth, but hey, so what? You get over it, you know. You just, you just you know, rub a little dirt on that tooth, and you be fine. You gotta chew the gum. That was that was half the fun. That's funny. <laughs> Three spots left in the mini. That's the double box break again. You, you don't uh, uh, want to buy into the double. We have a single box break for the mini up there on the website as well. Matt, you're a big uh, baseball guy, right? I am. Uh, how about Joe Musgrove last night for yeah. the, throwing the first no hitter in Padres history, and it couldn't have been a better story because Musgrove uh, grew up in El Cajon, California, just outside of San Diego. Okay. So he's like a, he's a Padres guy, he's a San Diego guy. He's a local. Yeah, yeah. and he throws the first no hitter in team history. And, and Musgrove is a guy like four. This is his fourth major league organization. Okay. He's only 28 years old. But nice pickup for the Padres. Got him for the Pirates in the offseason. Um, I think he was the first round pick, I think, maybe, too. Yeah. Oh, uh, Dennis, uh, Matt just gave him out a big whoop whoop um, for you with, with the uh, young young vocal cords there, man. It was like it's the best whoop whoop we've had here uh, in the UA break room. That includes uh, Campbell and Rollins. Um, so, yeah, it was cool. Yeah, uh, Joe Musgrove. That was that was. I know you were working here last night yeah. with Donnie. I didn't see the game, but I just saw all the highlights last night or this morning. Uh, very cool. So usually in like a a no hitter like that, there's a um, a good like a play that kind of saves it. Was there anything? I no, a couple line drive pretty clean hits. I saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a nice pitcher. It's funny, uh, Logan as a Pirates fan, just more insult to injury because you know even the the, the Cubs kid Trevor Williams pitched really well. In his Cubs debut last week on the right. Pirate, who had horrible numbers last year, really high ERA. Yeah. Uh, but he was fantastic. Uh, he should have gone six scoreless. David Ross left him out there to start the seventh, and uh, gave up a, like a four pitch walk and then a single. It's like should have pulled him after six. He was done. David Ross admitted after the game he should have pulled him, but still, uh, Trevor Williams, the other ex Buck, you know, six six innings, two runs, should have been six scoreless or at least six one. Six innings, one run, but regardless, he was he was really good. So yeah. hopefully, he, you know, that's all you need is a, a change of scenery, you know, yeah. some other uh, voices in your head instead of the same coaches or manager, and right. it worked. But um, yeah, cool story, Joe Joe Musgrove last night throwing the first no hitter, uh, and the guy who caught it was uh, Victor Caratini. Oh, that's right. You know, that's you right. Darvish's personal that's caddy. Right. Yeah. The last couple of years with the Cubs, and right. then Caratini went in that trade to San Diego, and the Cubs basically were just. Dumping salary, uh, but Caratini caught. He's he's a good dude. So that was yeah. that was neat. I'm not a, I'm not a Cubs fan, but I think Caratini he has a lot of he's got a lot of potential. Uh, yeah, good hitter. He can definitely hit, and he's he's pretty good defensively. He's um, he's a nice player. That was does, does tough to start, see him go. Does he start for the Padres? Is he no, I think he's still. Uh, I don't think he's starting every day, Caratini. Okay. So he's still kind of platooning. With, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So kind of like he was doing here. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's good. So you you think you do you think do you think he could ever be like a full time? No, I think he's good in his role. He's a switch hitter, Caratini. I think he's. I don't think you want to play him too much. I think even he got exposed a little bit when the Cubs did that at times last year when uh, Wilson Contreras was hurt. Or, right, right. Um, but anyway, fun story last night. Masters going on this week. We have a Masters pool going yeah, on here. That. I'm doing okay. Lee Westwood disappointed me. He didn't even make the cut. He's been playing really well this year. Uh, that hurt. But I have Spieth. I have DeChambeau. I have um, Shane Lowry. Okay. Yeah, yeah. he had a good he, he made the cut. He made the cut, yeah. Uh, so are you in the pool here? I'm not. So I was okay. just going to ask you because I was – It was so the Masters started on Thursday. I was here Tuesday night with you. wasn't here Wednesday, so I kind of missed that a little bit. But um, so you pick how many players did you get to pick? You get to pick uh, six. Six, and then so you pick six guys to how does that? Yeah, I think it's six. I think it's six. So it's all based on the, their odds of winning. Okay. Um, and then you it's like a point total, so you can't you can't just pick like the top five, you know, number one ranked players in the world because you that would put you over. Okay. You know, so you got to pick some guys who are, you know, some of the guys who are in the middle. Yeah, guys who are like in their 60s, you know, or some guys who are just like I picked the, the kid. Couples. I think he's South. I didn't pick Freddie Couples. I, I went with the kid, uh, 
a CT Pond. Okay. Didn't yeah. make the cut. I think it was six over after day one that shot even or one under in okay. day two. Didn't make the cut, but uh, it's it's fun. All for fun. Yeah. All for fun. I'm, I'm a big Masters guy. I, I like watching the Masters. It's um, always a good time of the year. It's always right around my birthday, so. Uh, cool. That's right. Matt's got a birthday coming up. That is true. Happy birthday, Matt. I'll see you tonight, of course, but uh, just in case I uh, I forget. I'll see you before then. But yeah, I'll see you before then. So it's uh, April what? The fourteenth. Fourteenth, April fourteenth. We were talking with Gary the other day. Uh, the, the, you have any famous people born on your birthday? Pete Rose. Pete Rose. Yep. Pete Rose. Pete Rose stuff here in the uh, in the room. Yep. He. Um, yeah, he was born probably a good fifty years before I was. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least um, more than fifty. <laughs> <laughs> well, probably um, about fifty. Yeah, right. Yeah, because you're tw- you'll be you'll be twenty five. Correct. Yeah. Full confession. Um, well, there's another uh, Baker Mayfield actually. Oh, there you go, Baker Mayfield. Baker right. Mayfield's one year older than me, so he'll be twenty six and the fourteen. Okay. So, I have uh, Wilson Contreras. Yeah. Former Blackhawk Christopher Steeg. Okay. People are like, who? Christopher you even Stig. count Christopher Steeg? I love. I do. <laughs> yeah. I love Christopher Steeg. He's always fun to watch. <laughs> he was. I got uh, Dennis Rodman. Okay. I'm May thirteenth. Uh, uh, former actress B. Arthur, the late B. Arthur, uh, also a uh, five thirteen. Okay. <laughs> we got some orders coming in, so I think we're gonna we're we're close, Matt. Right? I think so. Yeah. I think we're, we're close. close. How close are what do you what do you got on your end there? As far as uh, what are we close to filling out here? I got two left on the complete helmet. Two left on the complete helmet. Uh, break number two. Two left. Um, let me see here. Looks like we still got three left on. The double mini, number one. Three uh, left on that, on the double mini. We got four left on the spring ball, number one, platinum series. Um, five left on the complete jersey, and five left on the scrim. Okay. So we're halfway through some. Two left on the complete jersey, number two. And three left in... In the mini. What do you say, guys? Next week, the uh, the lotto stuff coming, coming. Uh, that that'll be fun. More, more prizes to win in random boxes. Yeah. I think that's a big mixer series. Going to have a lot more uh, product, but we still got some fun stuff here in the room. Our usual complete jersey, complete helmets. Uh, the minis, we got eight minis left. That's eight true. minis in this, the mini. And then next week we should have uh, a new black box mini series. Mini, I always, I, I always have to say mini helmet series. If I just call it a mini series, then it sounds like something that's coming on ABC TV <laughs> uh, uh, next week or something, right? So right. Uh, the new mini helmet, the black box where we typically have... You know, it's a double box break at, at thirty-five bucks. Uh, so a new one coming. I'm assuming next week. That might be part of the lotto. I'm not not quite sure. Things are always fluid here in the in the UA Live Break that is true. That Studio. Is true. Uh, as Matt Matt's only been here what three? Are you in week three? This is the end of my second week. Now. End of the second week. Oh, is that only it? Is that only it? Yeah. Second week. Yeah. Man, it seems like he's been here longer. Um, but uh, but fitting in seamlessly and. Um, Doing a got good job here on the on the back room. It can kind of get crazy yeah, on some of these nights when we, sure, yeah. you know, are flooding in. Yeah, when like we're getting like ten orders in, in thirty seconds. Yeah, that happens sometimes. That is true, but it's all in good fun. Yes, absolutely. Who wants to close out some breaks here? I know some guys will wait around to see if. Something's gonna fill, so they could, uh, so we can open it now, and they don't have to wait, you know, a half hour, hour, the next, you know, the next time we uh, do a show. So we're close here on a couple, and that would be good. It's always fun when you get a new series though coming out. It's uh, always exciting, and you never know what you're gonna get, and always uh, fun yeah, some, breaking here. So some new headliners and series. This mini, we uh, plowed through a lot of the headliners, but. Every time I seem to open one here, we get we get something it's good. Better, yeah. Um, right, yeah. So that, that was a really fun. I think that's why they called it the mini. Yeah. Because the, it, the the amount of headliners 
we had in that, including the, the Brady camo, the Marino right. camo, Drew Brees. Um, so it's like it's the, like the... Like, like, I, yes, or like the best mini. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but whatever the boys want to name it, cool, cool with me. But yeah, those are single box breaks. But right now, two of the minis, we have a single box break and a double box break posted on the website. What you say, guys? We got to do more than one box today on a Saturday. We have to do more than one box. That would... Uh, that would not be good. What do you say, guys? You can also do, uh, you know, the A train, those uh, footballs, the the white panel, and those super grip footballs. You see on that that graphic on the website for the the A train? Yeah, I'm looking at it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You got that Curtis Martin with you know the uh, LT uh, Lawrence Taylor LT. Uh, on those uh, brown super grips with those that, that sh silver sharpie, right? When you get a good auto with the silver silver sharpie, it's just like with a basketball, then it looks really cool. Right. Otherwise, I, I really like the white panel. But you get a good auto on the brown on the brown football, like the super grip. I think it looks pretty pretty dope. All right, got another, we got another order in. We're getting there. We're getting there. Bar's open, guys. We're, we're not. Uh, we're not shutting it down here in five minutes or anything. It's only. It's only two thirty. Two thirty. Hmm. And we got one left in the complete helmet number two. So there we go. It'd be great if we could. One left on. in the helmet. One left in the helmet. One left in the helmet. Complete helmet. Yeah, we've got a lot more different um, product coming up. Let me re rephrase that. Uh, you know, some of the, some of the names, as you guys know, who are regulars here in the in the in our studio here in the UAE Break Studio, we uh, we'll get some common names, you know. But we got you know the, the Dallas show was a couple weeks back now. Uh, we're starting to get more of those guys that we got from that uh, autograph signing show, mainly football guys. That's Stuff is now getting into series, boxed up, so we're gonna be seeing a lot more, um, a lot more names that we haven't seen here. That's good. At least for a while, if, if ever, in in the studio here. So uh, look look for that. But <coughs> pardon me. But in the meantime, uh, we we've got some cool stuff here uh, this afternoon. I don't know if you saw the Bulls game last night, but uh, Zach Levine at thirty nine. I first know first Zach first was on fire. And the Bulls lost, of course. They, they, they are, I mean, they're still not there yet, despite uh, adding, uh, yeah. you know, Vucevic. Right. Who makes them better, clearly. They're better, but they're not ready to contend yet. Yeah. I don't even know if the front office cares if they make the playoffs. It'd be nice to get Levine some playoff experience, some of the, the younger guys, the Kobe Whites, the Patrick Williams. But right. uh, they, they need... At, you know, they need like a Lonzo Ball type player, guy who can defend. The Bulls just many times show no interest in defending. Zero. <laughs> Zero. It's it's like YMCA ball watching the Bulls. Yeah. Uh, they, they can score with Levine, Vucevic, some other guys, but my goodness. Sometimes you just got to care about what you do, and I don't think they really. It's the effort, I think, is not enough. Effort. All right, so we're good at complete helmet number awesome. two. Awesome. There you go. Thanks, guys, for filling that out. Complete helmet number two. Let's do it. Thank you, everyone. Let's randomize it, and then we'll open uh, the box. In the meantime, Matt can give you a little update, too, uh, when he has uh, a minute here on uh, what else is close. Just give me one second. Yeah, no, no hurry. We got, we got time here. All right, so there's the list. <clears throat> Guys, thanks for uh, buying into the spots. Let's randomize this eight times. And then we'll do uh, live break number two. Oh, Dakota's already called out a box. That a boy, brother. Thanks, Dakota. It'll be box 30. There we go.
All right, let me get the box 30. Thanks, Dakota, for calling that out. Box 30. Matt, I saw someone brought some Fannie Mae chocolates into the room yeah. uh, in the last day or so. I was not here yesterday. You know who, you know who did that? Box 30 out of 60. Um, I believe those were Donnie's, and he tried to pawn them off on all of us. Ah, so he doesn't like them, or he just throws too many? I just, yeah, I think he was just kind of a little bit of both. Just sharing the good, uh, yeah, sharing the love. The good man he is, Donnie Rollins. Because you know what happened? When, when you see the candy, you gotta eat it. I, I, I'm just not that strong to say, no, I'm good. Those who are good like that, God bless you, man. I, well, feel free. I'm very weak. Feel just, free. Yeah, I will have one. Not now. Not on, you know. Not not during the show. I can wait. Oh, here we go. It's a Beckett C O A. It's a Buccaneer. That's Mike Allstock. Ooh, it's got a cool inscription. This is not a rep. This is a, uh, it's a speed. Tampa Bay Buck. This is the pride and joy of Jolie Catholic Academy here uh, outside of Chicago. Mike Allstock with the first, I'm sorry, fire those cannons inscription. Very cool. Very cool. Who has the Bucks? NFC South. That's Michael. Michael, is it Suggett? Is that how you pronounce it? Michael, congrats. Mike Allstott, the former fullback. Fire those cans with the, with the bonus there, with the inscription. Matt, do you remember uh, Mike Allstott? I His, do. Allstott's like, he's like... 50 years old now? Yeah, I was kind of more towards the end. My, I was young, Thank you. but... Um... Yeah, he was the man. Back when the back when NFL teams used fullbacks, I mean, Allstott was, like, the best pretty much during his time. Uh, playing at Purdue. Michael, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And I... I am not positive, so I shouldn't say... Is this a... The boys would know if that's an amp. Sometimes they have a hard time... To, you know, distinguish between the the amp helmet or if it's just a regular eclipse. It might just be an eclipse. Guys, if you're the break and you know, you can educate Joe. But uh, it's pretty dope. You're welcome. Thank you, Michael. Michael Stock. That's pretty cool. Michael, is, is Michael a new customer? I, I mean, I just have not seen his name regularly in the, uh, uh, in the orders. I've seen his name a couple, okay. a couple times here, yeah. Guys, thanks for filling out that break. Thanks for participating. All right, that was live break number, uh, complete helmet number two. All right, let me give you another update here on what we have left <coughs> uh, as far as live breaks that are sold down here this afternoon. So Spring Ball, the Platinum, uh, live break number one, three spots left in that. That's good. We should do we should do one of those. What do you think? So do you say three spots left in the Spring Ball Platinum Helmet Series. $53 uh, per spot. Six left in the Mini number two. That's the single box break. Four left in the uh, Complete Jersey. That's uh, live break number one today. Four left in that. Two left in the mini. That's the double box break. 
Two left. Three left in the A train. We may do an A train too. Three left in the A train. The A train um, being Allstott. You guys probably know that. That was his his nickname, and it's cool that we pulled the uh, the the rep helmet of of Allstott. Right. Thank you. Don't know if we've pulled the football yet of uh, the namesake in this uh, uh, football series, but uh, we do with the helmet anyway. All right, looks like we filled up the mini number one. The double awesome. Box, so. The mini number one. That double box break. Correct? Double box break. That's Fantastic. Correct, yeah. So we'll do that next. Yeah, so the minis, we have just five left. We have five left uh, in that series, and the box numbers, you can see them on the, uh, on the crawl there for the, uh, the mini, 42, 50, I'm sorry, yeah, 44, 52, 55, 56, 57, 58, and I think I, then I think I have 59 and 60 as well here. I just don't have them up uh, on, on your screen. So that was complete helmet 30, right, did I say? Yeah, 30. Let me update the, uh, the the crawler on the helmet. Guys, thanks for filling out uh, the mini. Number one, this double box break, which was uh, posted last night. They didn't fill it last night before the guys signed off, but uh, it has now. So we'll do that. And again, mini number two is a single box break is up on the webpage. If we fill that out, you guys want to do a double on that or a double on something else, uh, let us know here. Let yeah. us know in the chat, and uh, we'll, we'll proceed. Yeah, I'm going to hold off on posting another mini until, okay. we, until we Fair see, enough. see if the mini single, single mini yep. fills. Good move. All right, there's the list. If you're in this break, guys, you want to call on a couple of boxes on this double box break for the uh, the mini helmet. Uh, I appreciate it. Again, the minis, 44, 52, 55, 56, right up, right up to 60, basically. Eight times. Next click is the uh, is the list. Anthony calls out 57. Thank you, Anthony. One more box number here. Let's do 57. Let me grab 57. And we need one more box number here. 57 on the mini. And then Dakota comes in with 44 and 56. So Dakota, we'll go with 44, all right? Anthony got 57 in. And I'll grab 44. Thanks, Dakota and uh, Anthony. Let me grab 44. Let's do 44 first. We'll just go in uh, numerical order here. All right. There we go. There's the seal. Okay. Box 44. Good luck, guys. Thanks for filling it out. It's a Beckett COA. All right, this guy. One of the best safeties in the history of the National Football League. Huh, Ed Reed. Ooh. On a Ravens eclipse. This is pretty. This is pretty cool. How about that? Ed Reed, Baltimore Ravens, AFC North. That's Dakota Nelson. Dakota, way to go! Ed Reed just got into the Hall of Fame, did he not? Yes, he was the man. I mean, this guy, great ball hawk. Dakota, that's sweet. 
Get a little Ed Reed. So who do you think was better, him or Troy Palomalo? Because they're kind of in the same division. Yeah, I mean, I think Reed thing. was more of a uh, free safety. Palomalo was a strong safety. Okay. But I don't know. We got some Steelers fans in the room. They're like, Ed Reed, you know. But, uh, <laughs> boy, that's like, as, as I've said before, uh, third hit in three days. There you go. You're on a run, Dakota. you got to keep playing, I guess, right? <laughs> right. Can't stop when you're hot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's like picking Cadillacs when you're talking like Palomalu and Reed, right? Do you have, right. Or do you have a favorite? No. It's like either guy is gonna gonna be fine. The red Cadillac or the black Cadillac. I'll take <laughs> either one. Yeah. Right. That's true. That's true. I mean that. <laughs> do, you, do you have a, a favorite of those guys? I don't know. I just think Troy Palomalu with, <laughs> with the hair. Yeah, the hair. He can't beat it. I mean, I mean, he just was kind of all over the field all the time, and I don't know. Just... Matt, you keep going with that hair. You might and you get a little perm going. You might challenge. That's uh, Troy. I'm telling you, he's gonna give me like give me like five years on me. <laughs> get there. You're doing. You see, you see Matt doing shampoo commercials uh, <laughs> before you know, before you know it. Well, that last night I got called Jesus again. So, <laughs> who called you Jesus? That's awesome. Yeah, that, it's better than like I, I tell him, Donnie. It was like it's. I'd rather be called Jesus than Satan. Right? Yes. So. A point taken, Matt. I, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> Jason Campbell, yeah, you, you know what? Uh, headliners are left in the Platinum Series. Gosh, I don't. And I did not work yesterday. Do you remember uh, pulling any cool Platinums last night? Um, that's a good question. Sorry, Jace. Not totally Fair sure. question. And I, I do not know. Um, and that's that spring ball. Where, 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 yeah, the spring ball... We only have six left, but I, I'm not sure if we're still waiting for a headliner. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing we might still have one left here, but I, yes, I, I don't know. If any and one, I would say. Pardon? I said if any, there's probably one. Yeah, there's there's probably still some cool guys in there, right? This is box 57 out of uh, 60. Thanks, Jason. Let's see what we got here. This is uh, the second box in this. Um, Double box break. To back at COA. Come on, Joe. How about the young QB of the Giants, Daniel Jones? It's pretty cool here. On this Giants. This is, for, this is this is cool. I love this. The silver. The silver and the, the big blue decal. Daniel Jones, a young guy with a, a good auto. Yeah. New York Giants, NFC East. That's Anthony Yabara. Anthony, congratulations. Daniel Jones. I feel like Daniel Jones is like one of the most basic names in the world and they should be able to read. You should be able to read a Daniel Jones signature. You would you, because of the the amount of the the, the just, few amount of letters in his name. You mean just because it's Daniel Jones like that? That's such a common name. I feel like you should be able to make out a Daniel Jones. Yes, but some guys, including our own Cole Komet, the local kid, the tight end for the Bears. Look, I would. I'm a Bears fan. If I won a Cole Komet item, I'd be thrilled. Cool, a local guy, St. Viator but. High School, but Cole. You can write better than that. Shame, shame. I'm just going to scold you right now. Shame. But this, for a young guy, young QB, I, I like this auto. It is nice, right, Anthony? Daniel Jones. And he's got, you know, he's got some new weapons this year. He's got Kenny Galladay. He's got uh, the former Viking tight end, um, Rudolph. Okay. The Kyle Rudolph, right? Mm -hmm. right? So, and he needs to, any Giants fans out there, he probably needs to amp it up a little bit. He does. Right? Definitely. <laughs> I don't. It works. It's crazy. It works out that way sometimes, Dakota. You got the number you called out. I got the number I called out. That's awesome. That's cool. Hope you guys are happy with those. Anthony and uh, Dakota winning uh, in this double box break. And Cole Komet was a Notre Dame guy too, right? Yes, Cole Komet, Notre Dame. Exactly. So I feel like that's even more of a reason. Not that there's like a stereotype there, but he should be able to 
write his name. Right, you think like Notre Dame, a high quality academic right. institution, would. Cole, I'm sure Cole Komet watches UA yeah, Live Race. Cole. Cole, come on, brother. What are you doing, Cole? I've told this story before. Um, my, my brother knows, uh, he's good friends with Ron Kittle. White oh. Sox fans would know Ron Kittle, yeah. former American League Rookie of the Year, 83. I think Kitty was Rookie of the Year, and um, a great, you know, home run hitter. So Kittle had a nice, you know, MLB career, but he, uh, he has told my brother, my brother has passed it along to me, that he had veteran players tell him to work on his signature. You know, right. so Kittle, you know, Kittle's a big dude, big hands, right? I mean, he's got a uh, he's got a beautiful signature, beautiful autograph, right? Ron, Ron Kittle, yeah. So it's like, you know, look, and I, I don't want to hear the excuses. The guys sign, uh, you know, thousands of pieces every year. Too bad. <laughs> Too bad. Make it nice and legible. Anyway, that's my uh, two-minute rant on uh, the signatures. But I, I think most guys will tell you they love a memorabilia piece a little more, regardless if it's worth a lot of value or not, or it's just sentimental, when, you, when it's a clean signature. Right, that you can read, yeah. I mean, like a big Blackhawks guy. I love to sign pucks. They don't take up a lot of room. Kind of like the mini helmets and stuff. Right. But like when I see a guy like, it's just like a, a terrible auto, it's like, eh, I think I'll pass. Unless it's someone like Kane or Taves or, you know, right. Dunk, right. someone like that, you know, Duncan Keith. Okay. But like when you're just kind of like an iffy player, <laughs> at least you can do is uh, write your name legibly. Or give it a little flair. Like some of these guys, well, you know, it, it's almost screw, but it's got some flair to it. Right. I dig those. But yeah, Daniel Jones, that's say it's a good auto. All right. How we doing? Let me, let me give you a little uh, rundown. Unless, Matt, you want to give you a little rundown on what's... Uh, yeah, we just filled... Um, I just put it in there. It's the complete jersey number one. Beautiful. The jersey one fill. There we go. That's correct, yeah. Got a little momentum going now. So jersey one, let's do that. This will be our first jersey break today. Lots of jerseys here in the room. I think I got like six. We got more in the back. So uh, let's randomize, and then we'll do uh, a live break number one in the uh, complete jersey. Guys, thanks for filling that out. Is it Ron Kittle? Isn't he like a craftsman now or something? Yes. Matt, good call. Yeah, he does a lot of uh, real uh, handy a, a craftsman, like a lot of wood. Yeah. does a lot of baseball benches. If you've ever seen those, you have to Google those. Uh, the, the, the benches he makes. There's, there's actually one or two, I think, at um, what, what's what are the White Sox calling them? It's not guaranteed rate field. Is it still guaranteed rate? Yeah. They change it every year. No, it's no, they don't. Uh, <laughs> it just seems like it. It's it's gonna be like it's that been guaranteed for rate for like uh, at least two years, maybe three years. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, they've got one like in the one of the uh, entrances to the ballpark. Okay. One of his benches, his baseball bat benches. They are they are really cool. Yeah. Have you I'm, seen those? I have not seen them, but I see, usually like when the Sox have like a, the honor of players, they retire a number or something like that, or they have some sort of special event going on. Mm -hmm. He'll make one, so I've seen them on the. Field oh, oh, stuff. yes, yes, exactly. So there's a, if you're a White Sox person player, there's a good chance you're getting a Ron Kittle bench. Yeah, you have to Google those. Those are really yeah. gorgeous pieces of, of furniture. It's unique too. I mean, it's made on baseball bats. Yeah, see, yeah, it doesn't like there's not a factory doing. T he does each right. one uh, individually. He's obviously found a passion outside of a post baseball career. Yeah, that's really you know it's a ton of skill required. But yeah, Kitty's really good at that. He's he's just a good dude. He is. So that was his nickname, huh, Kitty? Kitty, yeah, I think people still call him that. If for Kittle, you know, Kitty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Huh. All right, the complete jersey number one who's in this, uh, is it George or Jorge? Really? <laughs> uh, and Jorge, you know, my, my last name is Aguilar or Aguilar. Really the correct the correct pronunciation. My, my um, I was born in Chicago, uh, but my, my grandparents on my dad's side are okay. from... Mexico. Okay. So the really the correct the correct pronunciation of my last name is Aguilar. Aguilar. Okay. Uh, a lot of people just Americanize and say Aguilar. Right. But it's prettier when you say it Aguilar, right? Aguilar, yeah. So former uh, but I don't speak Spanish. I speak a little Spanish. Okay. So if I if I say Aguilar all the time, people are like, Hey, you speak Spanish, I'm like Poquito. <laughs> a little bit. Blackhawks had a player, uh, Eric Desjardins. Yeah. 
Uh, I remember him a few years ago. He's yeah. a guy, you know, he's a, he's a mucker, a grinder, you know, yeah. fourth line guy. Yeah. Had a nice NHL career. Someone yeah. asked him once, like, you know, how do you pronounce your last name? Is it Desjardins or is it Desjardins? He pronounced it Desjardins. He said, because if I pronounced it Desjardins, people would think I speak French. And then you get all these French, you know, <laughs> Canadian reporters and yeah. people think, you yeah, know, you speak French. He's like, I don't. I, I speak English. Right. So he, he pronounced, he Americanized his last, <laughs> his last name. <laughs> So your parents didn't teach you any Spanish? No, my dad spoke Spanish growing up. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, the, we, I'm one of six kids. We didn't speak it in, in the house. They didn't teach any of you? No, I took it in high school and a little bit in college, but okay. I wish I were bilingual. So it's such a great yeah, I don't know. arsenal to have if you're bilingual, whether it's English and Spanish or right. French and what you know, English, whatever. Right. Um, guys, I've got a box over here. We can open a box. Do you speak a uh, foreign language at all? I don't. I wish. I really wish I did. I took Spanish like... You okay. High school and stuff, and but um, yeah, my my grand great grand great grandparents are from Italy, and my grandpa he said kind of the same thing. His parents came from Italy, and they all well, they spoke it, but they didn't teach him. And I'm like, why? okay, why do why, I don't <laughs> understand? I mean, I, I know it's, it's it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's fabulous to have to know a. Uh, Second keep, language. That's like you want to keep your language going, I think, and, and your family. Right. But that's a different conversation. Looks like Aaron King called out a box number. Aaron, thank you. 35. Thank you, man. 35 on the jersey. Let me grab that. There we go. Box 35. Oh, JSA, COA. What do we got? Woo! How about this guy? Have you ever heard of uh, Joe Montana? I think he was pretty good. My uh, my wow. recollection. Uh, Joe Montana. Oh, look at this, too. Look at this. Who's got the Niners, first of all? NFC West. NFC West is uh, Anthony. Wow. Another dub. That's a big dub. That's huge. Dang, I'm gonna pull this out of the uh, out of the cellophane bag here. Wow, Jason Campbell, let's close out the platinum peeps, right? Let's check out this with the all the accolades. I can't wow. believe they fit at least a handful of them of Montana. There's accolades on here. Look at this. Seen a lot of MVPs. <laughs> How about this? The uh, Joseph Clifford Montana, look, Joseph Clifford Montana Jr. First of all, let me look. Put that on the screen a little better. There you go. Four-time Super Bowl champ. I know people you can read, but I'm just reading along with you. Uh, 89, 90 NFL MVP, three-time Super Bowl MVP, eight-time Pro Bowl selection, three-time NFL All-Pro, All 2000 Hall of Fame. Wow. That's wow. impressive. We should be calling this the Montana uh, Series. This is a, our complete jersey series. That's a hit. How about that? That's absolutely it. Anthony, you got his football, uh, too. There you go. You can't get enough much. And this is cool. This has to be framed. This That's has to be framed. Really cool. And we still work with pro framing. Uh, they're not in our building anymore with us. So we can't just like go down the hall and say, hey, guys, we got a jersey for you. But if you want that framed um, and you want to use pro framing, let us know here in the chat. We'll see what we can do or at least steer you in the right direction. But... That's, uh, how cool is that, Matt? That's awesome. I've never seen, like, the accolades on a jersey like that. I've seen them before. I don't know if I've seen this Montana one. But that is stellar. Is, is that common, then, to put, like, a, an accolade? Not really. I mean, obviously, they're worth more in value, right? You can right. Suffi you suffice it to say there. You know, Donnie had a great answer once. I guess, you know, there's a lot of Montana stuff out there. But someone had said, like, you know... How much has he signed? 
And Donnie's answer, which I couldn't agree more with, was not enough. Because it's Joe Montana. Yeah, I mean, he's a legend. I mean... Everybody knows who Joe Montana is. And you're talking one of the greats at his position of all time. I mean, I don't think that's an exaggeration by any means. No. Nope. I mean, you saw the accolades on the jersey. That, that's going to look dope framed. So sick, right? He's another Notre Dame Ooh. guy, right? Another, another Notre Dame, right, Matt? Well done. That is that going back to the 70s there, then? Probably. Yeah, Montana, right? Early 70s? College? Yeah, college. Notre Dame? Yeah, yeah, probably 70s. Montana, we got to look at it. How old do you think Montana is? I'm going to guess... I'm going to guess 63 on Montana. 63 years of age. Strictly a guess. Let's look it up. Very cool. I'm going to guess 63 on Joe Montana's age. Ooh, look at you, Joey. 64. 64! He turns 65 in June. Okay. So you're close. You know, he's got the gorgeous wife. Of course, he's Joe Montana. Yeah, right. Was it his wife? Was she an actress or a model? He was married a couple times, but... Let's, okay. Um, which one are you thinking of? Oh, this, Kathleen the, the, Castillo. No. Kim Moses. Jennifer Montana. Jennifer. He's, he's married. This is he's on his third marriage. Okay, so this is weird because it's saying that he was married to Jennifer Montana from 1985 to present, and he's married to Kathleen Castillo from 1981 to present. So he's got. <laughs> he's, he's Joe Montana. I mean, come on, come on. I don't know. You could take that. Something's or, wrong. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, funny. Not that it matters, mind you. I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying. Right. So but wow, Joe Montana. That that was a that's that's about as dope a hit in the complete jersey as you're gonna find. Absolutely. Right. I mean, come on. So if he's sixty, if he's sixty five, so subtract. You, you graduate from college at 22, 23. Okay. So take subtract thirty two years. So yeah. Yeah, more, right? More than that, yeah. Yeah, 22, 30. Something like 40. Like, like 40, 40 years. Yeah, 40. 40 years on a college. Yeah, so late 70s, I think. Now, he probably played in the single bar helmet uh, era at, Mon at, uh, at Notre Dame. Yeah. But, yeah. But Montana stuff, I mean, you know, we've seen the, the dual auto Montana Rice stuff, too, on the minis and stuff. I mean, you, uh, you can't go wrong there. I didn't even notice. Did you, did you, could you read a signature? It's pretty good. It's 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 not Curtis Martin ish, but no, no one has Curtis Martin. <laughs> but uh, it's a good auto. It's a good auto for Montana. Yeah, absolutely. Jersey one. Well, that was uh, well really paid off for Anthony. But Anthony, uh, congrats, guys who were in that break again. Thanks for filling it out. Uh, sorry you didn't. Win. I always feel bad for the guys who like buying the spots and don't win. But I know that's 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 the risk you take, right? But uh, hopefully uh, you win enough to make it worth your while uh, here in the break uh, studio. And if not, just uh, uh, seeing the fun stuff uh, in the room. Give you a little update here. It's uh, 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock here in the uh, Great Midwest. We're in Burr Ridge. Just, we're like just southwest of Chicago. We're, again, we're only like... 15 minutes from Guaranteed Rate Field, right? Like 15, 20 a, minutes? Yeah, say it might be closer. When well, there's no traffic. Right. If there's traffic, it could take you three hours. Yep. You could walk there. You're better off walking sometimes. We uh, They got canceled today. They are supposed to play, but they're, uh, the weather, like I said earlier, did, is not cooperating. Did, did they uh, postpone the White Sox game? They, they yep. did already. Yep. They're going to play a doubleheader on the 14th of May or something like oh, okay. that. Okay. So. Anthony, you won a Curtis Mart Auto. Yeah, it, it's... I think it's it's our favorite signature as far as clean and just it, it's like it's textbook. It's like it's right on a the cursive writing books, you know, the yeah. those sheets that you get like you practice when you're first yeah. second grade. You know, it's just like another one I seen like that is Roger Craig. Also a very good auto. Yeah, his is like you can. It's it's Roger Craig. Yeah, I would see. say most of the autos we see are are good. Just Curtis Martin is just like Hall of Fame next level uh, <laughs> auto. That's what you should do. You should make like a Hall of Fame list. Like we should we should have a series, the cleanest auto, uh, like Jersey series. There you go. We could, we could do that. Put that right. on the list. Say it, write it cleanest down. auto series. <laughs> Who's in on that? 
Then we'll have the Scribble series. Uh, (laughs) Joe, stop saying stuff like that. Uh, All in good fun. Let me give you an update on, uh, unless Matt, you want to give us an update on... uh... I can, yeah. (laughs) So we are seven away on the complete jersey, eight away on the uh, uh, complete helmet. Uh, We have one spot remaining, and that's spring ball number one. we got to fill it. One left in the spring ball. We have six left in the mini number two, which is a single box break. Uh, We have two spots left in the A-Train number one, live live break number one. And we have three left in live break number one for this script. Script. So if we could fill that A-Train and maybe the uh, spring ball, that'd be great. Yeah, we got we got to start moving those scripts. I want to open some more of those because those are cool. We basically had one with the all stat helmet because that had that nice uh, fire the cannons inscription. I dig those. Right, right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, and that again, you guys know the, that that script has been up there for the last week. Um, we had a nice little run at the beginning when we posted that, and then it's kind of slowed down. But uh, and those again, those uh, could be authentics and that um, helmets. Could be reps, but some of those have like like three, four inscriptions on them in that in that series. Anthony, I agree. I love cigs that are simple and clean, right? <laughs> I just bought like a month ago. You know, I'm a big hockey fan. Um, a guy, Bill Gadsby, who was uh, played with the Blackhawks. Bill Gadsby just passed away. He was in his 80s, okay. but he played in the 40s, the 50s, maybe in the 60s. NHL defenseman, Hall of Famer, played with the Blackhawks, I think Detroit as well. Close the Platinum, awesome. You got it, Jason. Thanks for participating. Thanks for guys closing that out, that that Platinum helmet. But I bought a Bill Gadsby puck, and I honestly, even the big Blackhawks fan I am, I had never heard of Bill Gadsby. Then I did a little research, and I just like, I just like, this guy is awesome. He's a tough guy, defenseman, had great storyteller. Uh, very clean auto, and I bought it. I got it. I got it for forty-five bucks. And it's a, it's not an old puck. It was a kind of newer puck with the small, like old Blackhawks, like the old uh, logo on it. Right. Uh, and you can read it. it I'm like that is clean auto, Hall of Famer, forty-five bucks. I'm in. That's cool. And, and the COA was kind of, I had not heard of the. You know, it wasn't Beckett or JSA or, or Schwartz or anything like that. But it was. I, I researched it enough. It looked like I think it was. Legit. I know it was legit. I know the guy Bill Gadsby did a lot of signings when he was older, like in his seventies and eighties. So I'm like, I'm sure it's legit. Uh, my amateur eye, you know, just comparing it to right. others. Uh, but you know, so I mean, if that was a sloppy signature, I probably wouldn't have paid twenty bucks for it. There you go. You know, I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd pay ten. But awesome auto, and um, God rest his soul, Bill Gadsby. He was. Really fun, just reading about him, and that's what happens sometimes. You, you like you, right? You win a piece of memorabilia, uh, you know. Like, hey, I won this guy. I don't know much about him. Then you read more about him. It's like this guy was pretty cool. Right. This guy was a man's man. He was a dude. You know. Uh-huh. It's just then you really, like. You seem like you, you might you just love it a little more. Right. All right. So we're gonna do the uh, spring ball. We'll do that. That'll be that'll be next here. And there it is. It's ready. Guys, thank you. And this is the uh, single box break. Correct. Yep. On the uh, spring ball. So let's randomize it. Open a box. All right, there's the list. Eight times today. Yeah, Jason Cam, did that Blackhawks old logo. I, you know what I'm talking about, Matt. You're yeah. a hockey fan. Mm-hmm. It's, it's really cool looking. I, I, I think the Blackhawks have the best logo. In the, I mean, that's controversial to say now these days. I know, but I love it too. I think most hockey fans, regardless of yeah. who you root for, would uh, say yeah, that Blackhawks logo is outstanding. Next click. Okay, here we go. All 
All right, who wants to call on a box number here on the uh, spring ball? We have we got four in the room, but we got we got uh, we got six left total. So 42, 45, 46, 48. Pretty sure that's 50 box. It is. It's 50 boxes in that in that series. And uh, all right, looks like uh, Jim Anderson calls out uh, 42. Thank you, Jim. Let me grab it. 42 on the uh, on the spring ball. I'm going to take that off the uh, the crawl to get that away so I don't forget. 40, 42 is gone now. Here we go. There you go, Jackie Robinson. Anthony, you, you're playing the game. That's that's the way I love that thinking. 42, right? There you go. Perfect. Bang. Love, love the way you're thinking there. 42 on the box. Rivera, 42 as well, right? Mariano Rivera? Yeah. That's true. I Last should know that. Right. Yes. All right, this is the Platinum. A lot of ropes. These pit. Back at COA. About this guy, a, a giant, Michael Strahan. Wow! At a pro line, Giants. This is this is cool. There you go, Michael Strahan. That's dope. Who has the Giants? NFC East. It's Jim Anderson. Jim, that was you who called out the box, right? Nice. Dang. Is that the number on his helmet? It's kind of hard to see with the glare. I th yeah. Looks like I... Was he, was he 92? Is that 92? Can you see that? You're right. Cut, there you go. A little better. Yeah. When I tilt it. Yeah. Nice. Sweet. We've not seen much uh, of Strahan here in the room. You think he's a Hall of Famer? Yes. Does he still hold the sack record or someone did, did someone break it for single season? I'm not totally sure about that. I can look that up. And how good is he on TV? I mean, for a guy who's made a... Right. A really... Turned into a... a, a guy who's really good on television. Uh, Post-professional post, uh, career. That is sweet. That is sweet, man. Giants awesome. pro line. Gorgeous. Our second Giant today. All right, we got Daniel Jones on a mini. Very, very nice. It's a good auto, too. So it's the most sacks in a season, right? Yeah, most sacks in a single season record for sacks. The Stray Ants still hold that record? You guys on the chat, we're, we're looking it up. The Gap. That's on that white paint pen. I can just keep looking at that. That's really cool. Yep, it's still him. You're right. Is it uh, is it 20? Michael Strahan. Like 24? An insane amount of sacks in one year. It was 22.5. 22 and a half. 22 and a half. In a single season. During the 2001 season. 2001. Now, what's his is Hall status? Like eligibility? He's not in the Hall yet, is he, Strahan? I don't think so, but I think he's eligible soon. I feel like he's got to be getting close. You should know that. You know, what's, what are the act like? What, what are his like number of Pro Bowls and stuff like that? Does it say that there? Let's take a look. Yeah, that's really cool. Alright. He's a Super Bowl champion. Yeah. Um, seven time Pro Bowler. Seven time Pro Bowl. Four time first team all pro. He's in. <laughs> he'll be in the hall. He, he's not in yet though. Oh he is in. Oh he is in. Yeah, okay. He is when did he go in? Did he just go in? He must have. Um, 2014. 2014 he so went in. Okay. Yeah. There you go. 
yeah, you start seeing those numbers, holds a single season record right. for, for, for sacks, yeah, but he was Super Bowl champ, that's, you're in. He was defensive player of the year, Yeah, NFL sack leader twice. Yeah, I'm not sure how much more we have of him in in the in inventory. But hopefully we have some more stray hand stuff, maybe with some inscriptions. Regardless, that, that was a really cool hit. We pulled some cool stuff here today. We have. Haven't opened many boxes. Five, maybe? Six? But that was uh that's some cool hits. Looks like we filled up the A train, so we Beautiful. Good to go on that. We're gonna do a football. Yeah, the A train just sold out. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Three left in the script. And then everything else looks like it's pretty uh, pretty wide open. You are good to go on the A train. Awesome. Did you finish? You finished that double too, right? Yeah. Yes. The uh, the mini. Right, so I'll make it. I'll make it black. Yeah. The mini number. Oh, two. I'm sorry. Yeah. The mini. Yeah. All right. Mini number one. Mini mini number one was the double box break. Right. And then mini number two. We didn't. Mini two isn't filled yet, is it? Right. It's not. Filled. Okay. What do we have in the mini two? Let me let me check real quick here. Mini two has oh, still six spots left. Single box break on that live break number two for the mini helmet. Yeah, we did one earlier. That was the um, Daniel Jones, the single box break, or the uh, the double. 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 Yeah. All right. So a train. Let me find that here on the green sheet. I put it all the way to. Oh, I see it. Thank you, Matt. Yep. Good job. There it is, everyone. We'll randomize if you want to call on a box here for the a train. Football. We'll randomize and then we will open that. Next click. All right, there's our list. All right, Michael, thank you, Michael. Crisp, thanks for calling out the box 42. Oh, Jackie Robinson again. There you go, a little theme going. There you go. Right? <laughs> I like it. 42 on the A train. Guys, thanks for filling out that break. Good luck here, Corey George, or Jorge Garcia, Anthony, Ricky, Sean, Corey, Christopher Stanhope, Michael. Here we go. 42. On the eight. JSA COA. We got Ron Mix here. This is a Charger. Our first Charger of the afternoon. Ron Mix, the former uh, lineman. This, this was a this was a real accomplished guy here. Older player, as you can tell because you can read the auto. Hall of Famer. That's the class of 1979, I believe. Ron Mix. Who has the Chargers? It's the AFC West. That's Michael. Michael, you called call it out. Up. You got it. There you go. Jackie Robinson, there you go. There you go. I like it. Ron Mix was... Um, Tell me about him. Now, this is even before my time here. This is, this is cool. And then with, the, of course, all the Chargers. Not much stuff for the Chargers. Uh, you know, it's not like a Patriots ball or something like that uh, with all the accolades. But still very, very cool. Ron Mix... Did you have him? Do you have, do you have, his, do you have his info there? Oh, I thought you were going to tell yeah. me. Yeah, look him up, and then let me see how much I can remember about Ron Mix. 
But he, I know this guy was kind of like, he was a big, big dude, just a monster, good looking guy. How do you spell it? Uh, M I X. M I X. I want to say O lineman. Ron. Ron Mix. He's still alive. He's 83 years old. 83. Was he an O tackle? He was an O tackle. O tackle. What else you got for me? Anything else you remember? Uh, no. He may have played in the uh, AFL days, right? You figure the age, right? He did. He was an AFL champion. AFL champ. With the Chargers, I'm assuming? In 1963. 63. So that would have put him with the Chargers, yep. So he played with the L.A. Charge slash San Diego Chargers. Okay. From 60 to 69, and then he had one year in 1971 with the Oakland Raiders. He was he went to USC. USC. First-round draft pick, 10th overall. There you go. Um, and what year did he go into? Is that 1979? Is that what that says there on the... Uh, can you read that? Little? I think so, yeah. 79, looks yeah. like. Um, he... Back actually in 1960, the first, his first, the first... He was selected by the Boston Patriots. Ah, there we go. He was selected by the Boston Patriots in the draft. In the 1960 draft. Wow, very cool. And how old is he now? He's 83. 83, God bless him. Very so, cool. This is this is shows you how different uh, the tackles were back then. He was six foot. Yeah, how big was this guy? Right. He was six foot four. Six four. Two hundred and fifty pounds. That was a monster back then. I know, but that, the, right. I mean, what about today? Two hundred fifty pounds would be what? Like. A, oh, you'd be you'd be like a tight end. I mean, you'd be like <laughs> right. we'd be playing tight end. Right. That's right? like us, like a maybe a linebacker. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, of course, I mean, you know, they all train differently now. It's, it's so advanced. I, I don't like when people say, like, oh, that guy's too small. He wouldn't have been very good back, you know, if he was playing today. Right, yeah, yeah. Yes, he would have because he would have trained differently. Right, I'm not saying he'd be bad. No, I know, I know. I know you're not. But I'm saying it's a, no, you're right. I mean, a like, different time back then. Oh, yeah, totally. Like Butkus, he'd be tiny, you know, <laughs> uh, by today's measurements. But, well, even, hey, I'm, I'm old enough to remember. You're, you're shocked, I know. Uh, you know, when William Perry came to the Bears as a rookie, the fridge, Yeah. you know, um, Mid eighties because he was on that Super Bowl winning team, the, the eighty five Bears. Right. You know, Fridge was three hundred pounds, and back then, like no guys in the other. I mean, you you right. saw maybe a handful uh, of guys who were three hundred pounds. Now everyone's three hundred. Right. You know, college linemen are right. are, are three bills. Right. Um, you back then, that. Fridge and Fridge was. Let's face it, he was. Look, yeah. I'm not one to speak. He was a little heavy. A yeah. Little wasn't just like some of these guys who just look, you know. They're, yeah. they're running four six forties and they're three hundred pounds. It wasn't like the fridge was not that kind of in, in shape like that, but he was a fantastic athlete. But yeah, the fridge today everyone's a fridge right. in, in college, even at small uh, colleges. So I dig that Ron Mix. I how do you not like a guy like Ron Mix? So Mike, I hope you think that's cool. Uh, congrats uh, on that uh, on that win there in the A Train Live Break number one. Yeah, I have not heard that name, Ron Mix. Yeah, honestly, when I I've seen him his stuff in the room, his memorabilia in the room here before, but uh, I had to do a little research too when I first saw Ron Mix because I, and again, you know, oh lineman, like you've heard of the quarterbacks, even right. guys, you know, your age would know like the quarterbacks from the '60s if they were, I like, you know, the Bart Stars and John Correct. Unitas and and those guys, but uh, and I always appreciate the fact that like guys like Ron Mix, it's cool that Lenny Moore. You know, those guys are still around that they can be signing and sharing stories because, right. yeah, we, you know, we lost Walter Payton when he was 45. You know, John Unitas was, I think, 69. I just looked this up. Uh, was was 69 when he passed. I mean, he died 20 years ago, John Unitas. Uh, Reggie White. You know, Reggie White was a young man. I mean, so, you know, it, it's cool that those guys are still around and uh, right. they they're, do signings. And I think it's cool. They're part of the history of the NFL. And Absolutely. That's... Exactly, Matt. Exactly. So, I know sometimes people see, like, guys, you know, like, I, I never heard of this guy. He's an old guy. But it's still, that's eh, history. Right. It's history. And he, he was a part, I mean, he's a part of it. He gets to tell you about it. And I mean, yeah, that's, the that's... stories he must have. Right. All awesome. Right. So, we filled up the script number one. So Beautiful. We, we pulled out the, we, we filled the script. We did indeed. It's awesome. Thanks, guys, for doing that. Good. We haven't done one of these in a, I haven't in a while. Um, so that's great. So you are good to go over there. Let me get this going for you. All right. There we go. Yep. There you go. 
you go. Guys, how about a box number here uh, for the script? Let me randomize. We'll do that. So would you mind telling me what this script means? I know what it The means. script yeah. is just short for inscription. Okay. Yes. Good question. Which means that they, they wrote something on... Yes. They added, like, the year they went to the Hall of Fame, or it could be like the, the Allstadt helmet we saw earlier, Fire the Cannons. So a bunch of different ones, you know... The uh, the Lawrence Taylor one is almost uh, it's R rated. Uh, guys in the chat, you, have you heard that? You know what the Lawrence Taylor one was? Uh, it's um, L L T. He writes this, and he writes it in the third person, which is even cooler. L T was a uh, bad blank blank blank. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the Ricky Williams me, uh, smoke weed every day. I mean, oh, nice. yeah. So you know. <laughs> But we have a Singletary one. I don't know if we've had it yet, but it's, you know, it's like nine inscriptions on it. It's very cool. And guys who collect know those always do add value to uh, to the memorabilia as a, as a bonus. I mean, that's... But I, I just think they look cool, whether it's... You know, if you go to signings, too, you know, they, they cost more for the inscription. Right. So here we go. Here's our list. The script. All right, how about a box number here? Who do we have in the script? I can tell you 37, 38, 39, 40. I think we have more in the back. What if we have 42? We might. I'm not sure. But uh, those are the, these are the boxes we have in the room. If you're in this break, so it's Anthony, Ricky, uh, Anthony Yabar, Anthony Horn, Aaron, Lee, Tim, Amber, and Aaron. If you're in this break, you want to call out a box, uh, I'd, I'd appreciate it. Then, then I don't have to randomize uh, any of the box numbers here. This is the script live break number one here on the Saturday afternoon. It's uh, almost 3.30 here in Chicago, 3.30 Central Time. How about a box number? And then we'll uh, open the script, and we can fill out something else. Well, Matt will give us okay. an update after we, we break this. Going once. If not, I'll randomize. Ricky, at a boy. Thank you, Ricky. 38 on the box for the script. 38. All right, 38. Good luck here, everyone. All right, let's see what we got. Fanatics COA. This is a cowboy. This is the recent Hall of Fame inductee, Drew Pearson. This is on a this is a pro line rep with MVP Clutch. Mr. I'm sorry, Mr. Clutch. Let me show the inscription. Drew Pearson. It's a rep helmet. But here's one of the best wide receivers, obviously. Joe just went into the Hall of Fame. Is there a second Cowboy hit today, I think? NFC East, or is this our first Cowboy? That's Anthony. Anthony, is this your third win? Anthony, is this win number three for you, bro? I think so. Dang. He's killing it. He is. Mr. Clutch. Drew Pearson, a great wide receiver. Mr. Clutch. Inscription. Yeah, he just went in this year. Was that February they did the uh, the Hall inductions? Fanatic COA here and Drew yeah. Pearson. Uh, overdue. He, he he waited because Drew Pearson's got to be... Boy, Drew Pearson, I don't even think... I think he was even before the Aikman. Drew Pearson's got to be in his 60s. 
He just turned 70. He just turned 70? Did he? That's correct. He probably still looks like he's 50. Okay. Right? He's a man. Yeah. Me. Drew Pearson. That's cool. Yeah, he must have played... He must have played with the Stallback teams then. Those Cowboys teams yep. that were winning Super so Bowls, right? he was right? a three-time... Actually, three? no, 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 I'm wrong. He was a Super Bowl champion in... Um, what is XII, so that's what? XXI. So 20... No, no, so XII. So that's... Oh, 12. 12. So, yeah, he was a Pro Bowler in 74, 76, and 77. So, probably in the mid-70s. Anthony Yabara, third win. We haven't even done ten boxes. I don't believe today. That's a good. Uh, bang That's uh, <laughs> good bang. You do three out of nine or whatever we've done today. I that'll, that'll work. That'll work all day, right? Yeah. Well. Yeah, so he was the number eighty-eight before Michael Irvin. Okay, Drew Pierce was eighty-eight before Michael Irvin. There you go. It's a good nugget. So he was the head coach of the Dallas Texans. I've never heard of that. He was the head coach of the Dallas Texans. You ever heard of that? Dallas I am. Is that uh, what league was that? 1991. 91. Was that the old USFL then? He's trying to. Oh, it's arena football. Arena football. Sorry. Arena football. Okay. All right, here's here's what we got left, guys. We have um, looks like we're pretty wide open. The mini. Live break number two, the single box break, is uh, five spots left. That's the closest we have to having anything filled out. Uh, right? Yeah, looks like everything was wide open. So yeah, that's correct. let me check. Last order we've had, we'll give this a few minutes here, was uh, we just had an order come in. Give it a few more minutes. Let's see what we could if we can get close to filling anything out. Maybe we can fill something out still. We'll give it give it some time here. We're we're in no rush this afternoon. I saw yesterday that, or maybe it was yesterday, or uh, and the days kind of run together here now. <laughs> right. Sometime in the last forty-eight to seventy-two hours, it's John Madden's birthday. I think I saw that. You're right. I think it's today, maybe? Is oh, he 85, 85, maybe, 85. Madden? Yeah, yeah. 85, John Madden. Um, I was reading that uh, I have the ESPN app on my phone, and they had, like, an article talking about his, like, 25 stories or 23 stories of his, like, kind of legendary things that he's done. So it was cool to see, because I, I mean, obviously, John Madden was before my time. Sure. So it's cool to see kind of the, just some of the, the basic things that we see on TV even these today that he's was a part of and that he kind of instrumented and was monumental. And like plays time, like so X's and O's kind like, of stuff. For or? like example, the the yellow line that you see on TV for the first down mm -hmm. that was not a thing until John Mann was in the booth. Is that right? That that he initiated and that? He's like, we should put something on TV so people can see what the, the first, first down. Line is. I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I did not know. That. I didn't know that either. And so he was obviously... I, I couldn't live without that now, watching right, NFL know, right? TV. <laughs> and he was obviously with Pat Summerall, so yep. once he did, once John went into the booth, uh, you know how these days the broadcasters get to like go into practices and talk to players, yep. talk to coaches, like of course. one one stuff? That wasn't a thing until John Madden was, uh, came on. Okay, uh, I did not know that either. Yeah, so they would just get like a, a, a copy of a tape somewhere, but... He wanted to see the players and coaches tape, so he that's how that kind of started. So he was very instrumental in a lot of ways. Yeah, you know, it's funny because Matt, and I think most people, younger people, not just you, Matt, but um, you know, think of Matt, and of course, you think of the Frank Caliendo impression, you right. know, and kind of mum, you know, mum, you know, I got it, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and Caliendo is so darn funny at it, and so. No one does a better Madden than Caliendo. Yeah. Uh, but you kind of just think of Madden as this kind of goofy, dumb. That, that image, I hope people don't think that. But that could be like when, right. you know, you, you mumble like that. But Madden was a sharp guy. Obviously a Super Bowl champion coach with the Raiders. Yeah. But all this stuff, I had no idea that he kind of was at the forefront of that technology. Right. But can you imagine watching an NFL game now without the lines yeah, for the first, <laughs> first down markers? Right. 
And uh, yeah, it's frustrating. It is. And obviously he's got his um, the Madden video game yes. taken off. Yes, right, so right. Yeah, people started, just know it as Madden. Right. So uh, you know. Obviously he started that, so that was... Yeah, what a life, right? Changed the game, really. Yes, I mean, in yes. In a lot of ways. So. And Madden, even NFL guys, you know, like... They're all aware of their Madden rating and stuff like that. Right. You know, it's it's uh, you know Michael Vick. When you think of Michael Vick, you think Madden legend. You're right. I mean, it's just become part of our, our lexicon. Right. Uh, his last name. Um, right. Not Michael Vick. Uh, Madden. <laughs> uh, fascinating. So, John, if you're watching, happy birthday. I know he he watches UA Live breaks. I'm sure John Madden. Happy birthday, Coach. Eighty five. Good, good for you, man. You know, Kelly, you know, tells the, the funny stories. Like the first time you ever met Madden, like. Like Madden didn't think he was funny, but then Madden saw his grandkids reacting to Kelly and like they loved it. And then Madden kind of saw like really? how make this makes boy you made my grandkids laugh and they think it's funny. Okay, maybe you're not such a bad dude after all. <laughs> the, you I'll know, accept you. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I think Kelly said like he was you know he was he was nervous. Right. You know oh, you can sure. imagine like well here's the guy I imitate and he right. probably thinks I'm making fun of him. It's like, right. No, you're just you're lovable, but. That that could be perceived, right? And John Madden's not a small man. So. No, no, right, right. He could, and Caliendo is is short. He's not you know thin, right? Uh, but you know, he, Caliendo is you know shorter, shorter right. guy. But right. but any guy, any guy would probably could be intimidated by Madden, especially when he was a you know, younger, a little right. younger. But yeah. yeah, happy birthday to the great John Madden. I think I think he's eighty five, right? Eighty five. That's right. Right. Yeah. yeah, I saw that too in the newspaper. Cool. So that yeah. Guys, here's what we got left. Um, how close are we here? Six on the Spring Ball Platinum, break number two. And five left in the Mini. So let's give it a few uh, few more minutes here. If not, uh, we don't... Uh, if guys um, aren't buying into anything, we will uh, we'll wrap it up here. Last call, I guess. Let's give maybe we'll make it a last call here. Okay. Um, but uh, let's give it a few more minutes here. If not, we'll we'll wrap it up and uh, until tonight, Matt and I are back here tonight. If you haven't been watching the UA Live breaks recently, this is Matt Bohan, and Matt's the uh, latest addition uh, to the uh, to Ultimate Autographs. Glad to have him here, and maybe some uh, hosting in the future. We things are always fluid here that is very in, true. in the break room. Yeah, but good to have him on camera. Good to have him. Uh, here, so that's Matt. We've already had some uh, good nickname suggestions. Matty B, Matty, Matty Ice Ice. I love Matty Flows. What Gams called you the other night? Yeah. Is it Matty Flows? Yeah, plural. I got, I got that one last I night. I dig too. that. He said Jesus, <laughs> Jesus last night. But I also that's got, hilarious. I also got bearded Jesus. Bearded so, Jesus. It's like we're getting deep into this. Now. <laughs> it's a good gig. It's a good gig. I think Jesus did have a beard, didn't he? Oh yeah, yeah. He probably had a good beard. <laughs> yeah, he didn't, yeah, you know, Jesus didn't have the spotty beard, you know. Right, yeah. Some guy that grows here, but it doesn't grow. You know, Jesus. <laughs> that, that I'm sure that was just like beard hall of fame uh, right. I mean, for, the, you're, you're Jesus. for the great Jesus Christ. Right. <laughs> That's funny. He probably would have been a ball player. He probably would have been a good like wide out, probably yeah. safety. <laughs> Running some routes, yeah. How much would that signature be worth uh, Jesus Christ. on a mini? That bad would just be like. Right. He's yeah. like, stop already! Like his stop. His, his script could be like, "Amen." <laughs> <laughs> Jesus with an "Amen" inscription. Now that's that's like double box break. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't get much better than that. Wow! Fire! <laughs> All right, we'll stop. I will. I will stop. I I instigated. Don't be mad at Matt. I instigated that. But I, I, I do think that's all right. Anyway, guys, another minute. What do you say? Sounds good. One more minute. If not, uh, we'll uh, we'll wrap it up. Hope you can come back tonight, 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Uh, we will be here. Get a master's update. How about uh, how about Justin Rose? Who I think he said, you know, he was injured going in, yeah. and then bang, he comes down. He was I think I think he birdied his first hole today. Did he? Last time I checked before we went on, so I think he went to eight under. Nice. Yeah. So. Cool. Good stuff. All right. I think we will. Uh, 
Well, it's been been almost ten minutes. Let's give it. Let's go to forty here. Let's see. Let's go. It's three. I got three thirty-seven. Okay. Who won the script, Anthony? Um, that was that wasn't you again, was it? Yeah, you, it was you. It's it a, was you again, street, Anthony. Yeah. He goes away. Probably goes to get something to eat. Comes back and bang. You want to get? It. Yeah, Anthony. I was asking. I think that's your third win today. So you won the script. You won the Drew Pearson Cowboys replica with um, Mr. Clutch. I think was the inscription. Yeah, that's correct. You're yeah, bat- you're batting. Your batting average is pretty good today, Anthony. Yeah, Anthony, you won the script. So it was Drew Pearson, former Cowboys wide receiver, just went into the Hall of Fame finally. Uh, this this he I did. think February was when they announced the recent class. So yeah. Hall of Fame wide receiver with the Cowboys and a Cowboys um, pro line rep, Anthony. It's cool. Good auto. The great Drew Pearson. Oh, you have his football as well. There you go. Wow. Look at you, man. Well, I'm sure you got a lot of stuff if you've been winning like you won today. I mean, three yeah. dubs. Yeah. On a, again, we've done ten bo- nine or ten boxes. Uh, very cool. Oh, gee, uh, you know, offensive guard there? Oh, uh, no, I think well, it's just the same. Oh, oh, gee, okay, I got you, got you. Not, never mind me. But yeah, congrats, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us this afternoon. Yeah, in our uh, UA studio here this a- on this uh, Saturday. A little rainy in Chicago. I think it's like rain for like the next several days here. Yeah, but the lawns need it, so it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Uh, White Sox postponed already, Matt postponed said. Postponed already, yeah. Cubs playing Pittsburgh. That, that is PNC. That, that is one of those beautiful ballparks. Of the newer ballparks, that is that place is Have gorgeous. Have you been out there? I've not. I've just seen... I almost went a couple few years ago. We had, I think, weather or something. We, we couldn't, couldn't, couldn't go. Uh, but have you been out there at PNC? I haven't. Donnie and I were talking about it last night, actually. It's funny you say that. because And everyone you talk to says it's, it's gorgeous. Yeah, he said it was. it's great and it's one of the best in the league. So that's yeah. Good. Yeah, the newer ballparks, I mean, they they, they killed it on that. Yeah. That's very cool. Uh, it'd be nice if the Pirates had a real competitive team. That's true. You know, I mean, as a Cubs fan, I kind of say I hope not, but you you, <laughs> you you know you know where I'm coming from. But uh, keep it in Chicago. Uh, <laughs> I hear you, Dakota. Hey, guys, we're going to wrap it up here uh, this afternoon. We're back tonight, 8 p.m. Central. Same duo. Uh, it's Matt and me, Joe. So uh, thank you again for participating. If you bought into something, it didn't sell out uh, tonight. We just carried over into uh, tonight's uh, live break. So uh, we'll call it this afternoon. Have a good rest of the afternoon. I hope to see you back here tonight in the break room. If not, just have a good rest of the day, the weekend. Matt, bravo. Well done again. Thank you, Joe. Happy to be here and looking forward to tonight. We'll see you guys tonight. For Matt, I'm Joe. Be well. We'll see you tonight. Thanks.